Hi guys, so I wanted to show you a couple things on the scope just to help the lab time go more efficiently. So you can see I have my circuit set up. Uh, I've picked a, a time constant and a frequency for my square wave that's appropriate so I can see a nice amount of, sh of curvature uh, as the cap charges and discharges. And a couple things that I wanted to show you. So because I'm not really sure how much uh, folks have dealt with the scope. So I have two channels. The yellow is the square wave uh, coming on the function generator. The blue is the, ca uh, the voltage across our capacitor, um, the thing that we're interested in. Um, these vertical and horizontal controls, this will change both the size and the offset on the vertical scale. So like if I change this, I can make it bigger and smaller. Um, I can move it up and down. Uh, so that does. Uh, the horizontal is similar. If I change the size, it changes you know how much time is displayed on the screen, or I can change when exactly it is. Uh, next to the vertical the horizontal is the trigger. So the trigger uh, lets you set where zero is basically. Um, I can show you uh, this is currently set so that uh, it's triggering on the edge. So let me show you where the, what this is doing. See the little T? So the trigger is uh, triggering on the upward slope of our yellow channel one uh, square wave. Uh, and I can do things like change the slope of this. So I could change it so that it triggers on the, on the downward slope. It doesn't really matter how that you do it, how you do it, as long as it's just stable. Uh, and that's the trigger. Um, and the thing that we're, uh, so a couple things to help you when you go to uh, take your data. One thing that you can do is you'll notice this is jiggling around a little bit as we're watching it, because there's, you know, there's noise, there's variations, it's triggering every time. You can just stop it with the red button. I'm not sure what this menu thing is doing, but um, you can just stop it and then you don't have to worry about it wiggling around you can get uh, nice clean data with it stopped. Um, another thing that I would suggest is, in theory, you could read the trace off of here. You know, you can see that the scale says that it's one, uh, two volts per division uh, in the vertical and the voltage axis, and that the time is uh, a one millisecond uh, time scale or something. So, you know, you could, uh, look on here and say, okay, well, this is half a division, so this is about, a half, you know, one volt, blah, blah, blah. A much uh, cleaner way to do this is to make use of the cursor. So if you push this cursor button, uh, it's off. If we turn it to this uh, track mode, this will give us a cursor. Uh, I have it set so that it's uh, just on channel two, but you could, uh, you know, and that's the one that we're interested in because that has the voltage on the cap. So you can you can set it so that it's just on one channel or the other. And then now look what this is doing. This tells you as you scoot uh, along the trace, both the time and the voltage, it just spits it out for you. And it's a lot more accurate than trying to read the thing manually. So I would recommend using the cursor to take your data. It should save you time and give you uh, a better a better result. So hopefully this helps just kind of know some of the, uh, so you, you're made aware of some of the functions that the, uh, the scope has, and that hopefully this helps when, when you go to take data, so.